Hello and welcome back to another channel update. My name is Saiken and today I wanted to do the year-end channel update. I got a couple of really interesting topics for you. Number one, a very short update around the channel itself. Then a lot of XCOM 2 related news and then finally any other game related topics. So let's jump right into it. So first and foremost I wanted to start with a big thank you to all of you. Number one, the channel has grown substantially over the last few months, which of course warms my heart. Number two, the non-XCOM content specifically. The guides were being perceived very, very well. That um, is also warming my heart because a lot of work is going into that. And it is great that the guides are creating so much value for viewers. For the newcomers, welcome. For the long-term supporters, thank you a lot. The support and your, the interaction with you means the world to me. So that is great. Channel is in a good condition. Let's move on to the XCOM content. So before we join right into XCOM, here is kind of an overview of uh, the recent and still ongoing Let's Plays. Just wanted to do one sentence each. Aliens Dark Descent is currently airing and it is receiving a lot of interesting comments from you. It's a blind playthrough. The game itself is very thematic and a difficult uh, game. The type of gameplay is quite unique. I talked about that in my review of the game and it is just fun. The second game that um, blew up surprisingly well in the review was Gladius, A Relic of War. A lot of new uh, viewers around that as well. It's more strategy than a tactical game and has a lot of depth behind it. I might consider playing it a little bit more, becoming better and then actually releasing a campaign outside of uh, the Space Marines. One of the long-term oldie and favorites is still the Phoenix Point blind playthrough. I won't spoil anything, but I can tell you we will see some of that in the next year as well. It's going to be a long, long playthrough, potentially the longest that I've ever done. And then finally, um, one of my personal favorite challenges, the Hardcore Lone Wolf Run in Jagged Alliance 3, where I'm tackling all of the challenges, Dead is Dead, um, One Man, uh, Mission Impossible, To the Bitter Inn, and, uh, and Leather Weapons in just a single and exquisite timing, so the, um, uh, uh, the equivalent to um, exquisite timing in a single run. That was a fun one. If you are enjoying Jagged Alliance 3 content, then you might want to check that out. Now, moving on to the actual next run. So, uh, there is a small hiatus in XCOM 2. I filled that with um, a couple of Saving Your Disaster campaigns, which are always fun to uh, see. A matter of fact, do have, I think, one or two of uh, these bad boys still uh, ready to go but I was actually wanting to start releasing a full run and as most of you are aware um, I'm trying to finish the um, collaboration run with Tapcat and I'll talk about that in a second but for a whole host of reasons that has not materialized immediately as you can imagine it always takes a little bit longer time if more people get involved in a 2A project so therefore I uh, used some of the time that I had and followed up on a very old viewer request, which was, hey, Saiken, we have seen you with a lot of challenge runs, but could you just do a War of the Chosen, Legendary Iron Man standard run, um, Saiken Unchained? Could you go through it with all of the knowledge that you do have today? So I figured, of course, I could. Um, and how about we make it a little bit more spicy? How about we're not only doing an XCOM 2 War of the Chosen vanilla run, with no restrictions, but how about we're trying to beat the game as clean as possible, try to lose the least amount of uh, people, try to maybe not even take damage in most of the run uh, runs and uh, trying to flawless as many missions as we can. And that's really what the idea of the flawless run is. Whether or not I make it all the way through depends and you will uh, you will see, but if you're just in for some good XCOM, some very straight, basic, back to the roots XCOM, that's going to be your run. And it could also be a great reference run if you ever want to showcase to someone this is how you get into it. So I'll uh, explain a little bit more throughout the run, not excessively, but give uh, kind of the standard tips that those of you who have seen a couple of runs might already um, are aware of. 
Um, on the other hand, those who are new to the franchise might use that as the go-to run. And I hope it can position itself there so that uh, people actually use the run and uh, use it as a learning mechanism. I originally wanted to give that out as a Christmas gift, but due to the situation with TabCat um, and the collaboration run that I'll be talking about in a second, I will be effectively starting to release the Flawless Run from tomorrow onwards in the normal schedule every two days so that you get your little um, dopamine dose of XCOM 2. Which nicely brings me to the sneak peek into the Collaboration Run with TabCat. Listen, Collaboration Runs um, are difficult to begin with and of course this is uh, no exception. We are, I would say, 90-95% done, but then uh, certain life events always come in the way. There, it's no one's fault, but it just takes longer to release. It is, to my understanding, the f only and first full campaign collaboration uh, where two people are tackling an entire campaign. We have recorded all of it, so the material exists. It's just a matter of now going through it and polishing it. The idea behind it is we're going to be two commanders alternating in missions. Him and I are a little bit talking about what the strategy um, on the ground strategy layer uh, should be. But other than that, it's really two different playstyles that are hopefully uh, synergizing to beat a highly modded, psionically themed campaign with new enemies and new maps. We're using uh, the weaker version of the classes, which are called proficiency classes. Very interesting class design behind it, incredibly well done. Also the classes uh, that I've used in another challenge run, which is called Against the Hive. So it is very close to release, but I basically discussed with Tabcat over this weekend that we're going to release that right after the flawless run. So that gives us enough time to get everything camera ready, make it nice, make it tidy, um, and we want to uh, make sure that we're not releasing anything that is just halfway done. So 95 to 100% takes a few more weeks and I will use those weeks in order to present the flawless run to you. This is not off the table, it is coming right away and might be a great gift for the beginning of next year. Which brings us to the next XCOM topics. What is Saiken going to do regarding his next challenge run? So you have voted, I gave you a couple of options, and you were like, yep, it's going to be Long War of the Chosen. So in typical fashion of me going into a game, I said, you know what, Long War of the Chosen uh, should uh, be maybe 30 to 50 episodes, just like a normal run, so that we're not having the problem of viewer drop over time. Now, I am currently playing through it and finding myself at episode 70 and am still going. It is an addictive mod, I will give it that, and I still want to continue playing it. Whether or not that is a commercially wise decision is anyone's guess, but you could support it next year by simply saying, you know what, I will also watch episode 71 and forth following to make it worth the time. Which means uh, maybe, just maybe, I'll do a complete run on War of the Chosen, which I'm sure the war, Long War of the Chosen fans are uh, happy to hear about. The uh, Long War of the Chosen run will feature all of uh, the content that uh, the Long War mod offers, so I'll be going through all of the different things that you can uh, build. We'll try to use them in the actual fight. I'll be using all of uh, the other features, so Psi Operatives and Sparks, so that we can also see them. And uh, it'll be fun. I, I won't spoil a lot, but Long War of the Chosen is always a little bit different. So stay tuned for that. That'll release after the collaboration run with Tabcat. So I would say if I was a betting man somewhere in end of Q1 next year, and will take a while. So that, that'll be a good chunk of the XCOM related content for the next uh, period of time. So very XCOM focused. Now you might ask uh, what is going on besides XCOM and uh, I will answer. 
So, besides XCOM, there is still a production queue uh, at the moment that is a little bit more dormant because I'm focusing on the core content, which has been and will be XCOM 2 for the time being. The Alien Dark Descent run is still going at the moment. There are a couple of things that are definitely on my bucket list. I talked about Baldur's Gate 3, haven't even looked at it, uh, haven't even bought the game, so that'll be maybe something around uh, Christmas that, uh, that I'll take. There is uh, still War Tales on my bucket list. I definitely like the game. There is a new difficulty that has been released. Extreme difficulty is what it uh, was called. And from what I'm hearing, that should have been a lot of fun. So it seems to be implemented well. But they are still gnawing through their uh, DLC, which includes a new region, a new class, and a new kind of update to the game features overall. So once all of that is nicely tidied up, I'll give it a review um, and uh, we'll do a run around it. And then there are a couple of uh, things that caught my eye. Um, they are currently in gray because the chance of them happening immediately is in so far low as it depends on how much time I do have available. But there are a couple of old promises that I want to keep. Number one, Warhammer Chaos Gate, which is a Grey Knight themed chaos uh, campaign in an XCOM style. The game itself is fabulous and f from the very, very few things that I've seen it seems to be great, but I want to do a blind playthrough so I haven't looked into it um, in depth at all. Just a small teaser here and there. So that is definitely high on my long-term bucket list. Then the other thing is Lamplighter's League. I did a review. It was a fun game, really, really immersive. Um, had its uh, small issues, but I think it is still worthwhile a full playthrough. It, it seems like a fun interactive game. And the third one, I'm not yet sure about, but it was uh, fun whilst I was playing it, so I could see it uh, being a great uh, game as well, is essentially the Shadow Gambit, uh, the Ghost Crew, which I think would make sense for a full um, playthrough as well. Let me know what you think. Anything here that sparks your mind? Have I forgotten about any of the games that should be on this list? Then the comment section in uh, the section below is exactly where you need to let me know. Other than that, I want to end uh, with a thank you. I uh, hope you had a blessed and good 2023. We're nearing the end of it, so maybe the next channel update will be in the beginning of the year. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate uh, your viewership. And as always, take good care and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.